I've come to realize that almost all the stories I've told you about my own experiences in games have, uh, have all been about me being uh, terribly clever about you know all my great characters and all my great victories, or at least even when I failed about you know my my rebellious exits and things like that. Uh, the there are many examples of uh, uh, embarrassing defeats. Uh, I think ego has forbidden me from uh, sharing them with you. But uh, if you want some bad stories, I, I do have them. <laughs> uh, of course, it has taken me quite a while to remember them. Um, uh, of course, uh, again, memory blocks. Uh, I, I will share one of them with you now. It is a short story, uh, as it was a short run for this character. Indeed, uh, e extraordinarily short. About as short as they get. Um, this also ties into... Um, uh, my advice when it comes to uh, realistic role-playing games, as in as in simulations, uh, uh, you know, basically, there are games that are more realistic, so to speak, than others. Such as, um, let's take for example westerns. There, there's old west RPGs. Not many, but there are some. Uh, Deadlands, for instance, back here. Deadlands is kind of an Old West RPG in that it's kind of a mixture between the Old West and Army of Darkness. A little bit more than that, but there's like monsters, there's magic, and there's also guys with shotguns. and It's like a steampunk. Pardon me. Steampunk and Old West and stuff like that. Very fantastical. So that's kind of one extreme. One of my favorites. Favorite RPG. And then there's, um, there's like a GURPS Western, which is a lot more realistic, but it's still GURPS. You know, it's not to say it's bad, but it's, that's a lot more authentic, a lot more grounded. You can add more. GURPS, the great thing about GURPS is it's very modular. In fact, I think it's very much what like D&D &D Next, D&D &D Fifth wants to be, but enough about that. Um, and then there's a game like Aces and Eights. I don't think I have it here. Um, no. Um, Aces and Eights is a game by Kenzer and Company, the game, the company that uh, I used to write uh, movie reviews for in the comic book Knights of the Dinner Table. I should have brought it with me, really. Aces and Eights is a fantastic game. Fantastic. Um, one, of the, one of the most well-researched, most well written, uh, most well balanced, uh, best best designed, best laid out in terms of artwork, typography, all that stuff. One of the best games I've ever seen in my life. That I, uh, it's it is amazing this game. Um, I but it is also. One of the most meticulous, slow, and plotting games that I have ever seen in my life. Uh, it is. It goes into so much detail because you have to in any kind of realistic role playing game about westerns. If you want it to be authentic and you want it to be fair, um, if you want it to be fair and. Uh, Sorry. Um, you have to go into such extreme detail because let's say, for instance, the, the classic cinematic showdown, which probably almost never took place in real life. But let's let's try to give it a little bit of flair here. Combat in Aces and Eights is broken down to the tenth of a second. It's not like you roll a D10 and that's your initiative. You still roll a d10, but it is broken down into you take every tenth of a second. So every action it takes a certain amount of time that is like, say, like drawing a gun takes, I think, like seven tenths of a second. So you start at like four and then we start counting up four, five, six, seven, eight. And so every time we reach a certain number and it, the, the, you have basically like a flow chart. When somebody's action goes off, 
cocking a gun takes two, you know? So because it's important because it depends on who's drawing their gun, who does it first, who raises their gun, who, and what you're doing. Are, are you shooting from the hip? Are you raising your gun? Are you aiming down the sights? You know, what kind of gun is it? Is it a, like a cap and ball gun? Is it a revolver? Th that kind of thing. You know, your various physical defects. Are you nearsighted? Are you not? You know, all these things come into play. It is so meticulously designed. Realistic games with realism, there is a price. There are many prices to pay. In this case, the price is speed. Uh, and also detail. Detail comes into uh, the, the prices. Having all this knowledge ready at hand, if not memorized, easily accessible and easily referenced. And uh, you have to be able to you have to be able to um, put it all together. You know, when somebody gets shot, you have all these things like, OK, who gets shot? Where does he get shot? What does that mean? You know, actually getting shot in aces and eights. It's not a big deal immediately because in real life, getting shot can kill you instantly. And so can get, getting shot in aces and eights can kill you instantly. But it doesn't always. In fact, it doesn't usually. In real life, you bleed out. And so you do in this game. In fact, you can get shot a lot and you don't necessarily die. You can bleed out, though. And you do. Or oftentimes you oftentimes you'll survive gunfights. But the, the medical conditions are so bad that even after getting into one gunfight, your character's done. Because your wounds often go septic, you know. So even getting shot once can mean the end of your character because you have to get your arm cut off. It's just that bad, you know, uh, so that's just the end. That's with realism comes that price. So it turns out that with a realistic game comes realism. And you don't expect that necessarily until it's very obviously it slaps you in the face. You're like, oh, right. There was no sanitation <laughs> in the old West, you know, um, and so I was DMing this game and it just so happened that we lost two characters in a gunfight and they won the gunfight, but they got shot and their careers were over because the, like one of them got shot in the leg and he had to lose the leg. Some winner. So it turns out in that game, you don't want to get into gunfights. Gunfights are like the last option, much like in real life. I guess we learned a lesson. But, so there's a little parable for you there. But, my point is, here's, here's where I go to my story. The first time I learned this was, um, I was playing a game called Skull and Bones, which is a D20 version of a pirate RPG. Not a very good one. But we were trying to find a pirate RPG that uh, we should have played 7th C, but we were trying to find a pirate RPG. Um, so we picked this one up. And we are in a, we were like, well, let's play a realistic. There's a lot of rules for it. They had like a, they had like the normal one where it was like D&D. &D. It it's like a D20 version of like piratey things. And they were like, well, there's a realistic version. And we're like, let's do that. Let's try it. Realistic. We're going to be real pirates. Mistake. Never don't play realistic games. We play games to not be real. You know? Anyway, so we roll up our characters and we we start doing our thing. And we we decide to be we're, we're buccaneers, you know, we're sailing around. Okay, first off, first problem is a big part of being a pirate is sailing around. No shit, right? But uh, right away, the RPG doesn't really incorporate rules for sailing around. Why? Because sailing around is boring. You know, uh, naval combat 
is really boring. In fact, it's very impersonal. Naval combat. That's why pirate RPGs never really work. Um, because the naval part of it is very separate than the personal side of it. Like, you can have pirates on the ship, and then you have the ship. Right? So it doesn't matter how good of a pirate I am on the ship, really. You've got these guys firing guns at each other, cannons over here, unless I have a guy who's specialized in firing cannons, or I have a character class that is specialized in steering the boat. And those classes exist, but guess what? If I've taken that class, all I do is steer the boat. Yay. I'm fucking useless anywhere else. I steer the fucking boat. So right away, there's a problem with this RPG. The only answer, the, the only solution I've ever come up with is um, you basically combine a, a, a board game simulation with the RPG. I think I have one called Flying Colors, which is essentially a, a ship combat simulation from the, uh, from the Age of Piracy, which is so dry, but realistic, as realistic as one can get a board game simulation of it. So if you really wanted to do it, I guess you could. It would take all fucking day, but you could. There you go. But again, it goes to this really impersonal thing. It's basically a one-on-one -on -one game. The other players, it's... it's. But, so we decided to do this thing where we just kind of abstract it. You know, we're just like, okay, the ships go... You know, you go broadsides and you swing over and you go to a fight. Spoonie, it's your turn. So, I swing on the ship and I... Swing my mighty cutlass around. Oh, ha ha! Then it's the enemy's turn. He pulls his gun, shoots me in the head, and I die. <laughs> Realism. First round, shot in the face. And dead. That was real clever. Yeah. Is, like I said, short story. <sighs> Not much to that one, really. Yeah. But I will tell you another one. Just for a... <laughs> I should split this into two videos. Just to... <laughs> Get more views. No, um, this is another one of th this is a story that I almost hesitate to because it makes no one look good. But uh, since it makes me look bad, I'll just I'll stuff this into one video since I already look bad. But let me let me finish this real, real fast. Um, don't. Yeah. Realistic RPGs. <laughs> yeah, that was realistic. All right. I got realistically my head fucking blown off. God damn it. That's so unsatisfying. Yeah. Guns. Hooray. Blam. Splat. Spoonie's dead. <laughs> Shit. That sucked. That sucked so bad. You don't even make it out of the first, not even just out of the first combat. Round one, combat one, dead. I thought I was this big fucking swashbuckler hero. I got my head tacoed. God damn it. That was humiliating. I didn't want to play that game fucking more. Actually, we didn't for much longer because one of our players was really, really offensive. But uh, whatever. No, we had we had some personal problems with the group. That was. Thankfully, that game didn't go on much longer because honestly, the game itself, Skull and Bones, not very good. Did not enjoy that. Not and not just because I got my ass, my head blown off, and my ass blown off. Not just because of that. It just really wasn't that well developed. <sighs> Although it does, it sucks as I died. Anyway, um, Legend of the Five Rings. Uh, this is a game about me dying. A story about me dying. 
Legend of the Five Rings is a game about samurai. Uh, sort of. It's a fantasy game about samurai in a fantasy world. Um, it's got Oni and shit in it. I don't know much about it. And that's the problem. I don't know much about it. I really don't know much about kind of samurai era Japanese culture or about the Legend of the Five Rings game in general. But uh, the guys are playing this game and they, you know, I'm sitting there uh, and I'm just sitting there kind of reading book and they need a they need a fourth. You know, they need a fourth player. And they're like, hey, Noah, come over here and play this game. I'm like, what is it? They go, it's Legend of the Five Rings. I go, I don't know dick about this game. And they go, ah, it's, it's cool, it's cool, I'll walk you through it. I'm like, okay, I don't know shit about it. So they run me through the various clans and what they do. And I, 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 I so like, what, what's, the, what's the options here? And they go, well, there's, there's like Lion and Crane and, it's about all I remember. Uh, bear and mongoose and shit like that. Uh, there's the dragon clan, uh, stuff like that. Um, but I remember the lions are, uh, like the aristocracy stuff like that. Um, whereas the cranes are the duelists. That's what they do. That's all they do. They duel. They duel. They're duelists. The lions do not. But the cranes do. So everyone else is playing different characters, and I, I again, I don't remember the other classes or the the other clans that everyone else comes from a clan so uh there's there's unicorn who are like the horse riders they're good on, they're good on horseback and shit like that um dragons i don't know what the fuck they do uh lions so i'm like oh, nobody else is playing a lion i always like to play the guy nobody else plays I'm like I'll, I'll be a lion so uh so i i pick a lion and nobody's playing a shugenja which is kind of like a Kind of like a holy man slash uh, kind of mage type guy. So it's like a priest. And they're like, okay, okay, right on. Everyone else is kind of playing a samurai type guy. Um, so they're kind of running me through the shit that I'm going to do. Uh, so I, I rake up a character and they go, okay, so you got some options here. And so I'm like, well, what, uh, what kind of weapons do I use? And they're like, well, uh, you pretty much you just carry a wakazashi, which is like a the, the kind of short sword. Every, samurai carry the, the katana and they carry a short sword like a wakazashi thing um, and so I'm like again I know dick about the samurai culture type thing because I'm like I'm like 17 18 not much of an excuse but I don't know I still don't really know much about it so I'm like well since I'm adventuring I'm, I'm going out in the world uh Obviously, I'm being tasked by the the daimyo to go do shit out in the world. You know, I'm I'm leaving the temple. I'm leaving the clan to go doing shit with with this really rather eclectic group from other clans, which I would think is rather unheard of. I would be trained in how to use a sword, so I trained in using a katana. And he's like, okay, a little unusual, but okay, you you know how to use a katana. So I took a katana. Mistake. So first thing, and apparently this has been a group that's been going for a while. The reason I was that, the reason I was asked to join is because they've been going for a while. They lost one of their players, so I joined up. So they introduced me to the group, and the last person I meet is the crane. Cranes are duelists. He sees me with a katana. This offends him. Why? Well, I ask him this out of character. 
And he says, well, in this culture, wearing a katana implies that you know how to use it. And I go, well, I do. And he goes, well, you're a Shugenja. And I know that you're a Shugenja. You're not a samurai, though. I go, yeah, point. He goes, he goes, you don't know how to use a katana. I go, yeah, I really do. He's like, well, you're going to have to prove it. Because I'm challenging you to a duel. Because that's what they do. And so right away, I'm looking at the other guys going, what? And they're just kind of laughing at me. Like, <laughs> I'm like, no, what the fuck is going on? Like, you know, like, what, what, what just happened? And the DM's like, he just challenged you to a duel. I'm like, no shit, he challenged me to a duel. Like, am I, what, what? Like, am I going to have to fight this motherfucker? Like, do, can I say no? Uh, what? And he's, I, I, I don't even, I, I, apparently I couldn't say, I don't know what the fuck. I got railroaded into saying no. I, there was some reason I couldn't say no. But. Why couldn't I say no? I don't know. For some reason, I couldn't say no. Or if I did, it's because I couldn't say no. But everyone else is looking. They're all like, he's right, you know. You're wearing a katana. You're kind of fucked. And I'm like, why? It's because he's a crane. I'm like, so? Because cranes fucking... Their specialty is dueling. I'm like, what? You didn't know that? I go, no. Crane, they, d <laughs> cranes, that's all they do, man. What do you mean that's all they, there's a whole class centered around fucking dueling? Yeah. What the fuck good is that? I, that's, that's what they do. They duel. And I go, in an RPG, that's what they, they duel. They duel. They duel. I go, like, well, you got to understand, Spoonie. Or, Noah, I was Noah. The, I had not yet become the Spoonie. They go, they got to understand, Noah. This is a game as much about political intrigue and being a courtier as it is about going out and adventuring. So you've got to have people who duel. Crane's duel. And he's dueling me. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I'll tell you why. Because he has to get his rocks off. That's why. Because if you look in the Legend of the Five Rings books, Cranes who duel have to. There are such intricate rules on dueling that it's like it's like uh, aces and eights in a way. There are so many modifiers and so many specifics and so many little perks and tweaks to dueling that cranes like. Like snipers with a rifle. Fine tune this shit for days, apparently. You know, so he's this guy has been like, like sharpening a katana. Cannot wait to use it. So this is like apparently the first chance this motherfucker's gotten to break out his fucking katana. And I'm it. So he's been looking for any excuse he can to get offended. And there I am. Like, and I'm looking again out of character. I'm like, do you really have to do this? Like, I'm on your side. Like, I'm, 
I, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of pissed. I, I'm really pissed. I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what the f This is really uncool. Like, really, on his part, I'm like, this is really uncool. Like, I just made this character, and you're gonna fucking... And he's like, I'm... I hate this. He's like, I'm just acting in character. Wow. Yeah. Like I said, this is making nobody look good. Um, so, uh... So... But yeah, I, I just know that apparently cranes have skill lists for pages on all the modifiers they get to fucking dueling because that's what they do. That's all they do. Literally, all they do. They are useless to anything else but dueling. They can do that. Oh, they're good. They're very good. They're real good. So. I go. All right. Goodbye. I don't even know anything about the game. But I'm done. I'm and, and I'm so pissed off at this point. I'm just like. Like he even has to roll. But he is so eager. He's so happy. He's so... He's not gloating over me. I'm not even there. It's not like he's... It's not... He's not out to get me. That was my mistake. Is like when I was going like, do you really have to do this? What? Did I? No. It wasn't me. He just wanted to fucking roll his dice. It was so weird. Um, so as soon as initiative was over, I could have left. He wasn't happy about... He's like... He wasn't sorry. It was... It, he just wanted to start the combat and just... Mm. He was so happy, though. I, I'm, I'm glad I was able to make him happy. But, uh, yeah, the initiative... He rolled initiative, and he picks up, like, this bucket of fucking dice. He's like, okay, initiative, can you beat 600? Like, four. And he starts, he rolls his Iajutsu strike, and cranes, who duel, they do this thing where... The, uh, a samurai duel does takes place uh, if you don't know and i didn't know they do this thing where they they like they stand there with their like their their hands you know they they got their katana sheathed and they stare at each other and they go Whoosh! you know they snicked bub and they go Whoosh! and they put their sword back so whoever can do snicked faster wins but if they you know, if one of them doesn't drop immediately, then they have a sword fight. But one person almost always goes snicked. The other guy drops. But cranes who duel are usually so fast. Somebody drops. They go stick because they're so fast. Unless they're fighting another crane. He was not fighting another crane. But... More than that, they don't just go snicked. They do, I can't even remember what the moves are called, but they chain moves on top of the first move. So they do this thing. I, I can't even know. I don't even know how many moves he chains on top of it. But he starts rolling his attacks. I am so dead just looking at the sword. Like he, He's like, first I undo my intimidation glare. My head basically explodes from that, I think. I was like, ah! Pfft. And then he starts cutting me into pieces. But he, his first move kills me outright. I guarantee you it just kills. So he goes, snicked! And then he, there's follow-up strikes. So, like, there's one, and then they reverse grip. Two. Then they, like, reverse again. Three. And I think there's an upward. Four. 
five. And they sheath again. So it's like one, two, three, four, five. It's like this figure eight. I am chopped into fucking fish bait. And he fucking slaughtered every single one of those hits. Like, it was beautiful. It really was beautiful. And he's just like, oh, hmm. You know, this. And then just like, whew. I, I didn't, I, I wasn't, I, it wasn't even like table flip angry. I was just like, you know, I just get up and I'm, like you wasted two hours of my time for this bullshit. Everyone's time, really. I did not get this. Wow. Oh, I know. I remember what I was leaving out. I remember what I was leaving out. The second... I offended him twice. I offended him twice. It wasn't just the sword. The first time we met, it was the... It was the... The, the second thing that offended... He, he had noticed the sword second. That's when he challenged me. The, the first time was... He was really pissed off that um, we had been invited into somebody's house. This is backtracking a little bit. We'd been invited to somebody's house, and I cannot remember why, but the party was in there. We, we went in there, and we said hello, and the, the, the lady of the house, the wife, uh, offered us tea. And... I was like, thank you very much. I took the tea, drank it. Oh no. Oh shit. Everyone. Whoa. Like, like daddy had just hit mom at the dinner table. I'm like, what? What? And the crane was like, What? Apparently, in that culture, when you are offered something like a gift or tea, one is supposed to refuse it. But not just refuse it, refuse it thrice! Again, Spoonie don't know shit about this culture and something that... Something that really should have, uh, you should have maybe given Spoonie some backsies. Maybe some common sense roll. But oh no, oh no, fucking culture brain dead Spoonie Shigenja was just like, duh, thanks. <laughs> and everyone's looking at Spoonie like he's the supreme asshole, which apparently I am. Thanks a lot for assuming that I know fucking Japanese samurai culture inside and fucking out like every single one of these other assholes at the table. Like, am I supposed to have a fucking degree in, in, in this shit? Like, I don't. Maybe this is really common knowledge. Everyone, I, I just know I'm going to get so many emails like, what, you didn't know that? Fucking asshole. I don't. But no, I'm supposed to refuse anything that's offered to me fucking three times. Conversations in, Jap in Japan must have taken for fucking ever to get done. How do you even get through that shit? Tea? No thanks. You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty... No thanks. Really? <laughs> no. That's <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, come on. Ah, uh, all right. My God! Take the fucking tea! But oh no, grave offense out of there. And now he was, the crane was stewing that whole fucking time. Then he saw the fucking sword. Then it was on. It was on like fucking Donkey Kong. God damn. I get cut up so many fucking ways. God. <laughs> Closed casket that one. They could have buried me in fucking bags. That was fucking horrible. 
I don't know why. I, I don't know why that... Why... D the lesson to be learned there, aside from know the game you're getting into, several lessons, I suppose, is one, read the book before playing it. But I had just been... You know, I they asked me on the spot to play the game. I told them I had never played the game. They said, that's okay, we'll teach you. Good job, motherfuckers. You didn't teach me shit. And second, at least I guess you have to know the culture before you play a game set in that culture, which, mea culpa. Third, don't do that to your other, to the people in your own party. What the fuck? That was fucked up. <laughs> I'm definitely impressed. You don't fuck with a crane, man. Although, man, watching two cranes duel must be one of the most... You'd think it'd be spectacular. Like, if it was a movie? Yeah, it'd be really fucking spectacular. It'd be like watching Hero or, like, some crouching tiger shit. But in person, like it, it, watching the RPG play out, it has got to be one of the most boring fucking things ever. It's you'd just be watching two guys roll a handful of dice and then just look at their sheet and be going. OK. Dance of the Crystal Swan plus two. Yajutsu Strike. Upward three plus five, two, five, six, three, five, seven, five, five. and Comet of the Falling Dragon, 17. And repeat that for about 90 minutes. Watching two cranes, it just must be horrible. <laughs> oh, wow. Especially if one guy doesn't drop after the first strike. Oh, God. Ugh. The over-specialization at a Legend of the Five Rings must just be crippling. Can you imagine not playing... Can, like, you must be... If you're a crane, you must be terrified of ever leaving the house. Really, I call coward on cranes like you would not last 10 minutes in my world motherfucker like don't I get the right to choose the weapon if you challenge me to a duel or is that like a very English you know uh, Anglo-Saxon type duel thing I have to fight with your fucking katana like if I was a if I was a unicorn clan wouldn't we be able to fight with bows on horseback? Isn't that what unicorns do? Because you'd be fucked then, dude. You'd be fucked. I would fuck you up on horseback with a bow if I was a unicorn asshole. No. I have to fight fucking katanas. You get fucking five sword aijutsu strike. Fuck you. It was horrible. Yeah, that was another one. I didn't make it past the first round of fucking combat. I didn't make it past the... I died after the first fucking upswing, and this asshole insisted on finishing his fucking five-hit fatality combo just to see how much fucking damage he'd rack up. Fuck this guy. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, still mad. Still really fucking mad. Fuck that guy. I don't want to tell you any more stories like this. I'm not happy. I'm really not happy. I don't like Legend of the Five Rings. For the fucking... Yeah, for the fucking five actual minutes that I got to play... You know, I was at the table for two fucking hours. I made a character for about an hour of it. And then I sat there questioning what the fuck was going on for about 55 minutes and actual playtime was getting cut up for the other five. Fuck. I have to refuse tea three times? 
I just want a fucking drink. You want some Mountain Dew, Spoonie? No, no, that's o no, that's okay. You sure? That's, that, I'm, I'm fine. With it. You sure? I, I really. Oh, come on. Okay. Thanks. Like, if I say no, no means no, motherfucker. Three times? There's politeness, and then there's... I said no! God! Is that real? Did they make that up? I, ah! Three times! It must have been hell! What must Christmas have been like? I, I, obviously, I know, but you know what I mean, like birthdays or something like that. Fuck! I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there with my Lion Shugenja taking fucking bonsai pruning as a class. This motherfucker, this motherfucker is, like, busy crafting out his EI Jutsu Strike number four free flow combo. You know, his, his fucking... Talons of the Falling Sky Drop One Winged Dragon f Razor Fucking Honed Edge Shit Like I'm Gonna Survive the Fourth Fucking Strike Fuck And I'm Worried About I'm Worried About My Fucking Feng Shui Rating After I Trim My Fucking Bonsai Tree Like I'm Ever Gonna See That Shit Again which I'm not. Cutting so many pieces are going to be using his fucking fish bait. It's fucking horrible. Hate this game. I hope you last longer. Never piss off a crane. Although, they get pissed off so easily, I don't know how you fucking avoid it. Never look them in the eye. They're like Christian Bale when you cross in front of their light line. Ugh. I hate cranes. I only met one of them, and they're assholes. At least, if you're gonna... Man! That's all they do? What? What a hollow life you lead! Have some fun! Go outside! God! Ah, I gotta go. You make me sad. You really do. Man.